What's going on, y'all? You notice I've changed the setting. I'm inside of uh, one of the houses. So today's video uh, is probably going to shock you. It might offend you. And I did not make this video for my average viewer. Um, uh, I made this video for the small percentage of people uh, to whom this applies. There are two basic uh, philosophies in life. To, I'm sorry. Um, two basic philosophies towards life. One is called the will to power and the other one's called the will to live. The majority of mankind, the matter of fact, the majority of living organisms on the planet have the will to live, meaning their mission in life is to get through the day, to raise their families, to eat, to survive, just trying to get old. You know what I mean? Um, uh, they are what I would call the mediocre. They are the, the ones who don't demand much from life. They just want the basics and they're good with that. The will to power represents a very small number of people. And uh, the will to power are those who uh, also want to live. They also want to get old. But they are even willing to sacrifice the long life for a better life. These are the people who, um, who strive for power, strive for excellence. Uh, if, if you take, for example, on a job, 90% of the people on the job are looking forward to Friday. They just want to get to the end of the week. They have the weekend. Uh, matter of fact, there's a saying about that, um, that uh, there are some who look forward to Friday, some who look forward to Monday. The will to live people are looking forward to Friday. Um, they just want to get through the week so they can have their time off and enjoy themselves where the will to power people also enjoy their weekend but they look forward to monday so they can go into work and make shit happen you know what I'm saying and so uh that represents uh two different types of people um now i am kind of forming my philosophy but i believe that the races also have a similar philosophy of will to live and a will to power. So, um, you know, lately everybody's been talking about racism and, and uh, colonialism and things like that. Uh, the European, uh, and many Europeans or white people, fancy themselves superior because of it. Excuse me. The will to, I mean, sorry, the, the European uh, uh, was striving to dominate. He didn't, he wasn't happy just staying in his country. He wanted to see what other lands had to offer and saw the, the, um, he saw the opportunity to exploit everywhere he went, right? Um, uh, most places that the European went around the world didn't even have organized armies, you know what I'm saying? So it was easy for him to dominate. Uh, there's a book, I don't, I don't remember the, the, it's the author's name, but it's called The Iceman Inheritance. And uh, if you can get a copy of it, definitely read it. It, it talks about the white man's uh, aggression, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of people get outraged when they read it and, and uh, you know, want to shake their fists and stuff like that. But, and that's why I said this is not for everybody. <clears throat> I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Um, in every region, there have been aggressive people. And aggressive people get what they want. Aggressive civilizations grow and dominate when they simply make the effort to do it. This isn't something that white people are born with that makes them unique. Everybody has it. Every race has their, uh, matter of fact, Darwin says in his book, The Scent of Man, that mankind has its superior humans or something like that, human, the superior beings. Um, every race has its superior men. Every race has its aggressive men. And, um, uh, and any of us have that ability to, to duplicate those same accomplishments. What happened with the European is that the European, they weren't even working together for the majority of history. Um, they were competing with each other 
and when you know uh, um, kingdoms grew and expanded, kingdoms shrunk and disappeared. Um, one group would take that person's land, and in two generations, that person's offsprings will come take the land back, and then take my land. And they were just fighting back and forth, and all that warfare made them stronger as as a military force uh, collectively, right? So if I'm constantly fighting with my neighbor on this side and fighting with my neighbor on this side and fighting my neighbors over here, eventually all four of us are going to be superior fighters. If we're fighting all the time, we're updating our technology, things like that. And um, so, you know, when, when uh, I, I get in these conversations with these, um, you know, white boys on the Internet and they try to sell their white supremacy by referring to Greece and France and Rome and things like that. And uh, of course, I never acknowledge that they're superior because they're not. Uh, genetically, they're not superior at all. But culturally, they have a superior, they have superior um, uh, technology when it comes to warfare and, um, and dominance. Uh, that is something that comes from practice. So let me come back to, well, I'm not in America. Let's come back to black Americans in America. Black folks are still using 1960s strategies to deal with a 2020 white man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, the Gandhi-like philosophy of getting what you want through nonviolence does not work with a violent enemy. You guys hear what I'm saying? It worked for Dr. King because for a short time, America was faced with its, its, um, America was faced with its ills. It was faced with its, it was embarrassed by uh, in the court of, of global opinion about what America was doing. And it did give us some progress in America because of the media. But what happened from 1968 till now? The, from 1968 till now, white folks became smarter. Uh, they understood their weaknesses. They understood what they were up against as far as global opinion. Um, their uh, ethics was under attack. Their value system was under attack. And so they learned to develop uh, dog whistle terms. They had to hide their racism. They had to find other ways. Just like when they ended slavery in 1865, they had to learn how to um, continue racism under a different institution. You know what I'm saying? And what happened with black folks was the black man of 1967 could not be demonized because black people in 1967 were, uh, overall, we were a superior, we were a morally superior people than American white folks. In 1967. In 2020, we're not. Our own children, our own grandchildren are now criminals. They are uh, lazy. They are um, uh, dishonest. They do all the things that white people used to say we do. You understand? White folks used to have to lie on us to to justify the violence that he put on us. They don't have to lie on us no more because we're doing all that shit they accuse us of doing. And we have to acknowledge that times have changed and so have we, and we're now making it easier for them to be racist against us. And so when, uh, you know, I, I understand that the institution of uh, the penal institution, the um, uh, the educational system has been weaponized against black folks. 
you know what I'm saying, the financial industry has been weapon weaponized against black folks. Um, the employment industry has been weaponized against black folks. There's no denying that. But at the same time, collectively, we as a people are not doing what we're supposed to be doing. And we make it easy for them to do that. It is very easy for financial institutions to deny us when we don't pay our bills, when so many of us uh, accrue so much debt and we don't pay those bills, it's easy for them to say, well, look at your credit score. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah, do white people do it? Yeah, white people do do it. But guess what? The man that makes the decision, it's his it's at his discretion whether he's going to ignore your low credit score or he's going to exploit it and deny you access to credit. You understand what I'm saying? So it's different if a black man walks into a, a banking institution with perfect credit um, and a clean record. It's easy to prove discrimination with that. But it's very hard to claim discrimination when we don't meet the uh the standard you understand what i'm saying and so in this i mean you you name the institution uh uh education i can't sit here and complain about conditions of schools when my kids are fucking up when my kids are not doing the work when my kids are are going to school and cutting up and shit like that i have to first start with me i have to start with my household fixing this and then it makes it easier for me to challenge racism when it occurs. Um, not all of y'all are gonna be ready for this conversation because it's too easy to blame that white man. It's too easy to say, well, you know, they're racist. Okay, yes, I get it, fuck, they're racist, okay? But we have to do what we're doing. We have to bring back the moral superior, moral, moral superior black man of the 1960s. We have to have that. We cannot give our kids this disadvantage of a broken home, of a uh, of poor economic uh, financial uh, management habits. We 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 have to be willing to pay out the money to uh, to help help our kids get the tutoring that they need to make good grades. We have to stay on our, our kids and make sure they study and make them competitive and bring in those good grades. Because I cannot claim that my son is being discriminated uh, in the educational system when my kid is fucking up. You understand? So anyway, let's let's uh, move on from that, that subject. The bottom line is too many of us make racism easy to do. Okay, so uh, if we want to rectify that situation you know this black lives matter thing uh black lives do matter but i'm not running around talking about black lives matter i don't agree with the way the black lives matter are trying to affect change um i do like some of the cancel culture right you know obama was talking bad about cancel culture i i i agree with that i agree with a lot of that we should shut him down but we have to do more than ask this white guy to stop discriminating us. We have to take charge of things that we can do. See, the thing is, a pig is always gonna be a pig. You know, I got, we got eight dogs. <coughs> Excuse me. I can't get angry at my dogs for doing dog shit. I can't get angry at the, the cows for doing shit the cows do. I can't get angry at these goats. If they come in the yard, if I don't close that gate or, or keep the, the, the fence, uh, patch. I can't blame those goats if they come in this yard and eat up my garden because that's what fucking goats do. You cannot blame white folks for doing shit that white people do. As a culture, they are a competitive, uh, dominating people. You understand what I'm saying? They see themselves superior to you. You cannot ask equality or demand equality from a people who are bent on being superior. Um, I said this in an earlier video, but the counter to oppression and racism is to outdo your enemy. 
It's not to ask him to see you as an equal. Why are we asking a morally inferior people, a genetically inferior people, to be equal with us? Um, I don't believe that uh, the races are equal. I know for a fact the races are not equal. Okay, And I, I suspect that a lot of white folks believe that you're superior. You see, if I was to run a race with a guy who weighed 350 pounds with bad knees, I know I'm faster than him. I know I'm going to win that race. There's no reason for me to put obstacles in his way, to argue about the rules, to try to give myself an advantage, because I know I'm superior. Excuse me. I know that I am physically superior to my opponent in the race. White folks <clears throat> put these things in place because they feared at the time they feared uh, black competition. And everywhere that the black man gets in, uh, we outdo white folks. And, um, uh, and you, I mean, you, you name the field, we're going to outdo them. And so, you know, they play with the rules. They uh, try to discredit our accomplishments or they try to act like we're the exception and not the rule, stuff like that. But um, the bottom line is everywhere that the level, the playing ground is level, we win. We are a genetically superior people. And this is why um, the white folks have things like the 1488. Uh, so you guys are familiar with that. 1488 is a is a is a term that white supremacists uh, um, throw out a lot. You hear them; you, they get the tattoos and they spray paint. You know, 1488. Uh, 14 refers to the 14 words, and 88 refers to the eighth letter of the al alphabet, which is H. H H High Hitler. Uh, 14 words. I don't recall the guy's name. I think his name is Dan something. David. David. Jones or something. I can't remember what the guy's name is. But anyway, um, the 14 words is a slogan. It says that we must ensure the future of our people. And uh, uh, we must ensure the survival of our people and uh, create a future for white children. Why would somebody say that unless they felt threatened? White people do feel threatened. And uh, white, super white supremacy today, different than it was 100 years ago. 100 years ago, it was just plain old hatred. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm better than you. And that was the source of their hatred. You have dark skin. You are slaves. You are poor. You live in poverty. And I'm superior to you. And that's where that came from. White supremacy today is born from something different. It's born out of the competition. Uh, when, wife, when, when Trump would talk about uh, make America great again, um, and people love that slogan because they were thinking back to a time that white men did not have to compete for jobs. They blamed their joblessness. They blamed their mediocre lives on us. Because they feel that, well, they don't want to say this, but they don't want to have to compete against us on the job. You know, when you've had generations of privilege, right? You're used to the rules being bent in your favor. When, you, when you're accustomed to that type of privilege, then equality and fairness uh, seems unfair. And so what's going on with these white folks is that they feel things are unfair, well, I graduated from high school and I can't get a job. My kid graduated from college. He can't get a job. He goes down to the job to find out why he hasn't gotten hired and he sees black people running around. Oh, they must be reason why I can't get the job. That's, that's scapegoat 101. Psychologists have a good time with those motherfuckers. But like it or not, that's just how it is. And, and uh, that is the source of much of the racism that you see today. It is the fear of competition. It is the scapegoatism of my grandfather had it better than I have now. 
what's the difference? Well, now those black folks don't stay in a place. Used to be, you know, black folks would only get domestic and menial jobs. Now they're competing against me. Hell, they've got better uh, education than I have. They have better drive on the job than I have. You know, see what I'm saying? So, uh, and then of course, uh, there is simply the insecurity. I mean, white girls are now, what, is a ba uh, what does a white boy do now to try to make himself more attractive to white girls? You ready? He imitates black people. He, uh, matter of fact, the women do it too. They take pieces of our culture, pieces of us, and plaster it to themselves, and that makes them more attractive. That's the reason why Elvis Presley was so popular. Janis Joplin was so popular. Uh, half the rock, you know, the, the rock bands that were out in the 60s and 70s was because they sang like black people, right? Um, <clears throat> when, you know, the debate of... Uh, Ginger and Marianne on Gilligan's Island, you know, why did a lot of people choose Marianne? Marianne had brown skin. You know, they don't want to admit this, but they are attracted to darker races, but they don't want to admit that. So what they do is they appropriate it for themselves. So, uh, and then the ones who don't appropriate it for themselves, they feel threatened because their sons are now learning to speak Spanish and listening to rap music and things like that. They feel like they're being they're being eradicated, they're being erased. And the truth is, um, life for them, in their mind, it is. Because uh, times are changing and things aren't the way that it used to be. So, um, coming up in 21 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out right now. There's gonna be a part two to this, okay?